Hi guys, my name is Jenny. Welcome back to Fresh Foundations. In the last video, we were talking about knife safety and all of our knife skills. And in this video, we'll be talking about all the basic kitchen essentials that you as a college student should have in your kitchen. Here we have a rubber spatula. So you know when you're like mixing stuff in a bowl and you're using a spoon and scraping it, but you're missing a lot of sides and you're wasting a lot of product. Use a rubber spatula just to get all of that out. Here we have just a regular serving spoon and a slotted spoon. So you could use these to serve whatever you're cooking. So I usually use a slotted spoon when I serve something like meatballs. So you don't get all of that excess sauce and you just get the sauce and the meatballs. Here we have a whisk to whisk things together, really emulsify things that helps, especially when you're doing egg whites and you're gonna whip it into like a nice meringue. You have a dry measuring cup and dry measuring spoons. These are definitely essential in any kitchen, especially if you bake. I personally don't like baking, but I do need these measurements when I use other recipes. And we also have a liquid measuring cup. Now you're probably wondering what's the difference between a dry measuring cup and a liquid measuring cup. It's exactly in the name. So you're gonna use this for all your liquids, so your broth, your water, and these are gonna use for like sugar. So when they ask like, one cup of sugar, use one cup of sugar. You use all your dry goods for these. Here you have your colander. So a colander is literally what you use to like wash vegetables in or wash whatever produce you have. Um, not actually, you don't even have to use it just for produce. You can use it for all your noodles, all your pastas. You just go ahead and drain this. It has all these holes on the bottom. So the water just drains completely through. Oven mitts, please wear oven mitts. If you're if you don't have oven mitts, you can use towels, but make sure the towels aren't wet because they will not fight against the heat. You will burn your hands, and I have done that many times before, so don't be like me. Just these two regular bowls. Um, these are a stand-in for mixing bowls, so you can honestly use any plastic bowls, any glass bowls, it doesn't matter, as long as you have bowls to mix things. So you could use it for salads, you could use it for brownies, you could use it for really anything. So this is your regular cutting board. Um, I actually use two different types of cutting boards. So for all my vegetables, I use a wooden one. And for all my meats, I use a plastic one. So you're probably wondering, why am I wasting my time with that? Well, when I cut meats, you can see like the wooden ones get the grooves very easily. And when I cut meats, sometimes meat gets in between these. And like, yes, you're gonna wash it very thoroughly, but sometimes the meat can get caught and you don't notice it. And when that happens, mold starts forming. You don't want that. So I keep, usually keep my veggies and my meats separated by cutting board. Two frying pans. So I have a really big one and then a kind of like a medium one. You could just get the medium one and the smaller one. I usually use a smaller one for like eggs or just whatever small veggies I'm sauteing that day. This is just your standard sheet pan that you could use to bake. So actually, this is considered a hotel pan. So you see how it's like pretty thick on the bottom. A sheet pan is like way thinner like this. So at home, I use sheet pans. But in this case, we're just going to be using hotel pans as our sheet pans because we're just going to put things in the oven with this. It doesn't really matter what you use. And then our last thing are two pots. So I use these to make ramen. I use these to boil things mashed potatoes, anything. So yeah, that is all. Oh, I forgot one other thing, dish towels. That is a very big essential thing. One, to wipe down your kitchen as you go. Two, to dry your dishes. Three, to put it under your hot pans when you place it on the table so you don't burn through your table, especially if you live in an apartment complex like I do. I have very sensitive tables, so if I put a really hot pan on it, I've done it already. I actually burnt a uh, circle in my table. And then the last thing is just your cutlery. Cutlery, yeah. Uh, just your silverware is just to eat with. I mean, you can eat with your hands, like that's cool, but beef. Now using some of the equipment that we've just learned about, we're gonna be doing a roasted chickpea recipe. So what we'll need for this recipe is a can of chickpeas, crushed black pepper, salt, and olive oil. So the first thing you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be draining your chickpeas. So we're gonna go ahead and put it directly into the sink. I don't have a use for this liquid, but if you put the liquid inside of a bowl and whisk it up, it's called aquafaba, and you can use that for a really nice meringue. So here I have our mixing bowl and I put a couple of paper towels in it because we really need to dry these chickpeas in order to get them really nice and crunchy into the oven. So I'm gonna pour them in. 
and I kind of just move them around a little bit just to get most of that water content off. And ideally, I actually let my chickpeas just air dry a little bit for like 10, 15 minutes on the side while I go watch a quick show or something. But as of right now, these are as dry as possible as we can get them and we're gonna add them directly into our sheet pan here. And with that, make sure our oven is preheated to 400 degrees and we're gonna add one tablespoon of olive oil. And these are what they're supposed to look like at the end of your cooking time in the oven. You notice how they have a really nice golden like texture on the outside. And when you bite into it, it's nice and crunchy. It's a really good high in protein fibrous snack. Not only are those chickpeas a nutritionally balanced snack, but we could also put them in our end of summer salad, the next recipe that we'll be doing. The ingredients for this recipe are spring mix, watermelon, feta cheese, fresh mint, Dijon mustard, honey, balsamic vinegar, salt, pepper, and olive oil, along with our roasted chickpeas that we made earlier. So the first thing that we're gonna get started on is our balsamic vinaigrette. So we're gonna use a tablespoon of olive oil and add it directly to our bowl. I'm gonna use a teaspoon of ooh, balsamic vinegar. Add it directly into our thing. Let's do a little bit more. All right, we're gonna do two teaspoons of honey. I'm gonna do one fourth of black pepper. I'm going to do one eighth of a teaspoon of salt. So we're going to do half of this. All right, we don't need that much salt. And we're going to do half a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Ew. And with that, we're just gonna whisk that. All right, so now it's time to assemble our salad. So we're gonna take our spring mix. We're gonna take just about a cup, cup and a half, add it directly into our bowl. All right, we're gonna take our chunks of watermelon. We're gonna take half a cup, add it directly into our salad. Let's do one more. One fourth cup of feta cheese. One tablespoon of fresh mint. So ideally you're supposed to chiffonade it if you refer back to our kitchen knives uh, video, but I'm just gonna go ahead and tear it just cause I like the look of a tear more than the chiffonade. Very uh, fresh. All right, and then we're gonna take three tablespoons of our roasted chickpeas. Just gonna go ahead and directly add them. All right, we're gonna grab our rubber spatula and this vinaigrette that we let sit on the side. Give it one last whisk. And we're gonna drizzle it right on top. Put that on the side. And we take our rubber spatula and we're gonna gently fold everything. You don't wanna like vigorously mix cause you're gonna smush the watermelon and everything. We don't want that. We're just gonna fold everything until it's nice and incorporated. And this is our final product. I really hope you guys enjoyed our video. This recipe is really nice on a summer day or honestly to impress your friends. It was really easy to make probably less than five minutes just to assemble by itself. And yeah, it's very nutritionally balanced 
and it's really, really good. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I already said that, but <laughs> make sure to keep an eye out for the next video. But until then, stay fresh, Gators.